Okay, we're going to talk clamping here. And before we do that, we're going to talk about tools. Um, you might have learned the hard way. These are not the tools to use. Do not, you, though you can put a socket on that. And if you got the feel, you think you're saving time by using an impact, you're not. You're going to eventually have somebody on the crew that cannot feel what he's doing. And he's going to bust the panels. They're too fast. There's too much power, too much torque. And you're going to break glass. And you're going to get really mad. So don't do that. So, so the tools that we have found that we like, and there's a bunch of different 3 8 battery operated ratchets. Uh, even Milwaukee makes one that's too strong. Uh, we don't like that one. I have that on the truck too for other, other things. But these, these are great. These are just the M12 Milwaukee ratchets. We've used them for years and they're awesome. The reason they're so awesome is they don't have a lot of power. Because they're a ratchet, you're able to finish off torquing the clamps by hand technically they're supposed to have eight to foot eight to ten foot pounds of torque on them when you finish according to kyle and kyle sinclair at sinclair design and engineering where we get all our ground mount material from shout out to those guys they're awesome and their product has been wonderful um, but that being said use the right tools when you assemble their equipment the other thing i want to show you james i want to show them Continue this video, please. So again, the ratchets, I want you to kind of look here at what we're doing. Um, so every time we go to a trade show, I end up picking up some snap and rack sockets. Sorry, snap and rack, we're using Sinclair. But these sockets are like the perfect length to complement an M12 battery that looks like this. Why do I say that? Look at how that baby sits on there. It just sits on there perfectly perpendicular to your hardware. I see guys with, with the these style batteries, just fumbling or they're out of position, the frame is hard, they're on the edge of a ladder and they're never sitting perpendicular. That baby sits by itself on there so you can always use this as a guide. You're not hitting the panel, you're just setting it on there. It's plastic on glass, it's not a problem. And then you can finish. So you're torquing the bolt down and then, then you can ratchet to tighten it up to eight to 10 foot pounds. So that combination is perfect Use the snap and rack sockets or, or cut your half inch sockets or whatever. So that's just a handy thing. Um, you want to make sure you, it is important you start off with fresh battery. Usually one battery will get you through an entire ground mount. And uh, so you want the speed of these, the reach of these is awesome. And they're underpowered, which is not typically what you want, but in this application it's definitely what you want so we're going to hit go ahead and start building our 24 panel ground mount here and we'll show you some some more tricks as we go but that's my spiel on tools you know you can do i don't care dewalt makita but i do know these have worked and these have been flawless for about five years this is the first one i bought it was five years ago and they just they work really well starting the clamping procedure the end clamps are a different style you see the integrated bonding here with the serrated edge the clamps obviously they fit the contour of the purlin and on the ends you can hold them by with your hand i'll show you the spring clamps we use to kind of keep the mid clamps from rotating so we're starting on the west and what i like to do is use your solar panel as a sights on a gun so what i'm doing is lining this up and the distance from the purlin to the edge of the panel on our, in this case is 16 inches. So we have a piece of unistrut down there that's extended beyond 16 inches. That's my target. This is my end sight, rear sight. That's my front sight. And I'm lining that up with that 16 inch extended unistrut down there. And I just go with it and try to keep track of it as I go. So if I have to do a 48 panel array or more, I'm not five miles off when I get down there and get mad and have to remove the panels because it looks so bad so main thing with the steel establish a plane make sure everything's square the panels float on that plane and you determine the angle but use a target so the farther away the target is the more accurate your angle is going to be in rotating that's just our way of doing it we don't i've heard about strings and other crazy wastes of time this is the fastest way to build a sinclair ground mount so now we're tightening the clamps and you know, again, it doesn't have a lot of power, but I just kind of do a feel and torque it down and it's good. See how it's, the tool just sits there if you got the right battery and socket length combo. 
Wes already tightened his, but I'm going to show you underneath the array. Orange handled spring clamps. It just, if you don't use those, you can't really see what's going on underneath the glass, underneath the panels, and these will rotate away from where they need to be. And then when you come around here, it's like, ah, all my clamps are turned. So we just put these spring clamps on, they hold the mid clamp in place, and then you can continue. So that's our procedure, spring clamp, bottom clamp, he's already removed that. Other one, now you can see the other one on there. So that hasn't been removed yet. I'll just show you, these are just little spring clamps, and that's just a nice extra set of hands to keep that mid clamp from rotating. All right, we are finished with the bottom row of panels. And again, my target, again, I was eyeballing from down there. I'm a little off, but not too far off from where it needs to be, and nobody will see that in a million years. So that's kind of what we do, just shoot for target. Now this ground mount had cantilevers on both ends, and there's a little more play with cantilevers. If they were purlins all the way through, it's a lot stiffer. So I had a little bit of sag that threw me off a little bit. So um, I still happy with the way it came out. It's very even, straight, it's good. So that's it, steel left east to west, panels west to east, goes pretty quickly. You get the right tools, you don't break glass, clamps don't turn, they don't spin on you. And I'll take a look underneath. So they just, with that clamp, there's no way that these will rotate on you, spin on you, and they do, they will if you don't clamp and hold it in position. So you wanna maintain that with those little spring clamps. We found that's the easiest way to do it. And if you know of other tricks that you think would improve what we've done and speed us up, I'm, I'm all ears. Okay, the panel we've been looking for, last panel on. The other trick um, that I forgot to mention when you're bolting on the end clamps, you can adjust this purlin by pulling it one way or another so that you can plane out these panels nicely. Okay, does that make sense? You can either adjust this one or adjust that one down there. As I got a little bit of a step now, I adjusted this one. I'm probably gonna adjust that one down there just to make it flat. So that's that's it. So don't forget your spring clamps underneath to stop the clamps from rotating. Use the right tools. They uh, save a lot of effort um, and a lot of broken glass. So no impacts. So that's it. I hope this was helpful. And uh, got a lot of people building their own ground mounts. And I tell them, tell folks, if you can build a fence, you can build a ground mount. Because the hardest part is doing the posts. It's not the the building of the array. It's very simple. But uh, getting the posts right distance between, facing the right way, and getting the height to the point where you can look through all the holes on your posts, you're in good shape. Whether you do them in concrete or post driving, doesn't matter, um, other than the amount of time it takes to do the concrete. But that's the way we did them for years. So everybody wants somebody to post drive. And that's not necessarily even possible where you live. And sometimes it's against a hill where the machine cannot do it. That's another problem with some of the post drivers. And uh, that's it. So a lot of time. And don't forget to get your spring clamp down when you're done with your job because we've left a few on jobs. All right. So that's, that's building a ground mount, clamps for Sinclair Design and Engineering.